is time to let Chase Jarvis introduce Zach. And uh, Chase is my, my business partner at Creative Live. It would be a treat, be an honor. All right, Chase, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. I will, I will be brief. I want to say, uh, which camera am I looking at? I want to say, I'm going to look at that. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I couldn't be happier with all the events leading up to this. Um, it's been a pleasure over the last few years getting to know Zach, who uh, I'm about to introduce. He's an amazing photographer and certainly one of the most uh, exciting and uh, thorough uh, instructors. I just lost my audio. I'm going to pick up this mic right here. Isn't uh, that about this uh, one right over here? Oh, yeah. I'm going to do that. Lemonade, that cool, refreshing drink. Um, no, an, an absolutely amazing uh, photography instructor. And one of the things you get, you'll, you'll know about Zach if you don't already, and, and people who are tuning in are probably following along, him for, following along with him for a long, long time, but he's an amazing human being. So you put all those things together, and you sit down, and you watch him for a whole weekend straight, free, live on the internet, and it's going to be a really amazing experience. Um, Without further ado, I am so pleased and grateful to introduce my good friend, Mr. Zach Arias. Can we have a round of applause, please? Wide shot. Uh, thank you, Chase. Um, I would love to know, uh, g give us a very short version of what they're in for, uh, in store this weekend. What are you doing? You gonna uh, no, I'm not going to beat anyone up. Um, and, uh, not beating anyone up. Uh, how this is going to run is this evening is uh, three, four-ish hours. We don't know. We're going to just go over uh, philosophy of having a studio space, uh, space considerations, um, and we're going to be talking about exposure. We're going to be talking about basic equipment, gear, modifiers. And uh, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Pacific, we start shooting and setting up and walking through that whole process. And how Saturday is going to work is we're going to kind of start slow where I'm setting something up. I am, I'm using this soft box for this reason. If I want to make a change, I'm ma changing to the umbrella for this reason. Real kind of a Got slow, it. methodical kind of thing. We're shooting for two days, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we'll have little breakout mini sessions of like grip equipment or something like that. Um, Come Sunday, we're moving at a little faster pace. Got it. And it's more, uh, I'm on a job, these are my clients, I have to deliver. I am kind of talking through what's going on in my head, but I'm doing it at a little faster of a pace. Sweet. So we start very slow, and we build up to, we're just going. Sweet. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. Well, uh, <coughs> you guys are in for a huge treat, and one more time, I, I, I would like to say it's a, it's a great honor to have you part of Creative Live family. Um, it's our goal me. to bring in the best creative educators in the world, and no doubt And they're not available, so <laughs> you have me. <laughs> That's what you're gonna get more of this weekend, you guys. Um, please, one more round of applause for bringing Zach Arias here. Thank you so much, Zach. Take it away. Um, all right. Thanks, Do sir. It. All right. Um, yeah, big thanks to uh, Chase, to the Creative Live team. Uh, my awesome wife, Megan, is right off over here. And Hawk is, uh, Hawk Danger, our youngest, is crawling around here somewhere. Um, oh, we put him in a closet. All right, gave him a C stand to chew on. Um, but yeah, big thanks to everyone uh, for putting this on. Um, I, I swear I've nearly had a heart attack. Uh, a couple of times in the few last few weeks as we've been preparing and getting this ready. Um, I wanted to bring something different to this class uh, than what I normally do. Um, it's a bigger production. Um, my main man, Dan, had to pack 227 pounds of our stuff. And uh, so we brought 227 pounds of our studio here and then rented another 500 pounds. Um, so we have a lot of stuff to be going over. Um, I just kind of went through the basic, the basic idea of what this weekend's going to look like. Um, some of you tuning in, you understand exposure, you understand lights, you already own equipment, you have some modifiers, um, and what you're wanting out of this is how do you pose people? How do you, um, oh, that was my back shot. Nice. Um, that's extra. Um, <clears throat> you're looking for something uh, beyond exposure and gear and all of that. Uh, some of you joining us, uh, you look at flashes and you're just scared to death of them. Um, you don't know how to control them. You don't know uh, which modifiers. You don't, uh, you're not even sure, like, 
which lights should I even purchase, right? So everyone be patient. You know, if, if you already own lights and you understand exposure and you're looking for something else, uh, the World Cup is on. Um, you know, you can kind of tune me out and I'll, I'll come up with a hand signal, you know, for like, you know, intermediates. Log on now. Um, so um, that's going to be the weekend. Uh, it's kind of organic. It's kind of figuring it out as we go sometimes. It's very much like my own photo shoots. Clients walk in the door, I shake their hand, I'm ready to go. You ready? I'm ready. And in my brain I'm going, ah, oh, what am I going to do? 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 What I always do is I start simple and then I move forward from there. So this class is very much, we're going to start very simple and then we move forward. All right. Um, great. So we've got that taken care of. I want to talk about the philosophy of a studio space. And remember, this is a studio lighting class, all right? So this is working in a controlled environment with controlled lighting, basically. But that's a kind of a boring, you know, um, kind of class title. So we didn't call it controlled lighting in controlled environments. Um, but that's what this is, studio lighting. Now you might be saying, you know, I don't have a studio. But at the end of the day, a studio is a floor and a couple of walls. So if you have access to a floor and a couple of walls, that is studio space. That may be your spare bedroom, that may be your garage, that may be a place, you know, a 5,000 square foot warehouse down the street that you rent. Um, a studio space is just a controlled environment that you have control over the lighting, all right? We're not doing anything location-based. We really won't even be working available light uh, this weekend at all. We're going to pre pretty much be sticking with strobes, flashes, everything from hot shoe flashes to, you know, more powerful strobes. We'll be talking about all the gear and how that all breaks down. Um, so things like going out and working on location, that's not really anything that we're going to be dealing with this weekend because that's its own whole class right there. Uh, the other thing that um, uh, to be considering is it is a lighting class. So the stuff that like I'll be doing here this weekend I do on location. Uh, we just had a magazine assignment recently. We had to shoot the owners of a new restaurant inside of their new space and went back into a little corner and it was two walls and a floor and I had to bring out my strobes and bring out my modifiers and basically it was a studio situation, all right? Um, so my history of having a studio space, I do have my own dedicated studio space and I have been a full-time photographer back at it again. Uh, I tried once before, I failed miserably. Got to come back uh, six and a half years ago. It'll be seven years this October, all right? So seven years ago, uh, this coming October, I came back into photography, and at about the two-year mark of that, my business was growing. I was working out of a c one coffee shop in Atlanta, a place called Octane on the west side of Atlanta, and that was my office. And I would have my clients meet me there, and... Uh, we'd have a little pre-production meeting and we'd go out and we'd shoot on location. Everything was location. And if I needed a studio kind of setting, man, if I could find a parking garage that was empty at night, I suddenly had like a 20,000 square foot studio, you know, <laughs> with a couple 285 flashes and, you know, and that's it. But um, I've set up seamless on, on uh, sidewalks, things like that. Um, so I got to this point where my business was growing and I'm working out of my house. And here's, here's the biggest reason why I have a studio is I am a workaholic, all right? I'm a workaholic and if there's work in front of me, I'm gonna work. And when work was at home, I couldn't find a healthy dividing line between work and home. So I'd come home, but I would be at work. I'd be in front of my computer, staring at it, doing things on the computer, and, and um, uh, my family didn't really say, oh, well, you know, Dad's here. Um, he's just on the computer. So Dad's home, so he's home. But I was at work, and I needed to work. 
But sometimes that work went into dinner time. Or I'd leave the dinner table and I'd go back to work. I'd have emails to do. I'd have this to do. And I was getting to this point where I needed to separ phys physically separate my space from home and work. So when I went home, I was home. When I went to work, I was at work. And that was when I started thinking about a studio space. There were some logistical problems with being a location-only photographer. Um, what if it rains? I mean, you guys in Seattle, like, you know. But at least all your clients get it, too, you know. Um, at least you understand that. But in Atlanta, like, if it rains, there goes my shoot. Um, and then suddenly I'm scrambling for all indoor locations. And... Um, it would, it, I was thinking it'd be nice to have a little spot of my own where we could always go and if all hell broke loose with the weather, I could pull off a shoot. Um, and I was getting to the point with my income, uh, I was driving this beat up old truck my father had given me and I could go get a new car and a car payment and higher insurance payments or I could get a little small studio space. And a graphic designer friend of mine uh, told me about a little space. It was 800 square feet. And he was going to rent half of it for his office. So that's 400 square feet. This 19 foot by 21 foot little box of a room, basically. Um, and it was $400. And I figured it out with a car payment and my crappy credit score that I had and insurance and all of that. I'd be $400, $450 a month for buying a car. And I thought, all right, I can buy a car that's going to cost me money. Or maybe I could get this little studio space over here. And maybe that can make me money. So I signed the lease. And funny story, Murphy's Law. I go to the place. I sign the lease. I have my little square box, 400 square feet. It's mine. I walk back out into the parking lot, and my truck won't start. <laughs> and I had to call a buddy of mine to come give me a jump. Because uh, the alternator blew, you know, and the alternator was almost a month of rent. And I'm like, what have I just done, you know? You get over those kind of things. Um, so it was a little tiny. I didn't go out and, like, blow it out and get this big space, and I'm just going to go create a big, huge studio with a storefront that's really expensive and, and all of that. I just needed a space that was in a fairly cool area, a place where I could walk outside and I'd have some outside locations I could shoot, and I could do something inside as well. So my first space, 400 square feet, um, I had 21 feet on the longest side. And the first thing I did was I bought a roll of white seamless paper. And I started shooting on that white seamless paper a lot. And it started to get boring. And I started saying, and I didn't have a lot of money to go buy a bunch of different stuff uh, to, to like trick out 400 square feet. And tricking out 400 square feet is like, it's like tricking out an 81 Tercel, you know? I mean, <laughs> there's only so much you can do to an 81 Tercel before it's a little like, okay, why are you putting, you know, $5,000 of stuff into a $500 car? So a white seamless was it, and I started getting bored with it, and I was like, how much can I do with this one white seamless background? Um, and then I started learning how to make it white, how to make it gray, how to make it black. We're going to start with that tomorrow morning. Um, white seamless is now part of my style. It's part of what I do. Every client that walks in the door is shot on white seamless. Um, one day I hope I could, you know, I could do a show of my clients. You know, 10 years of my work, and it's going to be, everything's going to be white seamless um, because I've shot every client nearly in the last five years on white seamless um, so that was my little space and I was there for a year and my business grew and it was growing to the point where I could not shoot in that space any longer um, I had done everything I could with that space it was time to get a little bit larger of a space I was getting uh, some opportunities to shoot a little higher level client that wasn't quite the uh, it wasn't quite the, um, the environment I wanted to bring a higher-end client into. Um, and so I started looking for another space. I found a great deal on uh, this artist loft in Atlanta. I got a 2,500 square foot studio for 1,200 bucks a month. Um, it was amazing. It was a beautiful space. It was a commercial photographer's place for 35 years. Um, I got this heck of a deal, and I love that space. I, am, I miss that space. I, I Still, Meg and I, we will pine away for 
that old studio. Developers came in, they wanted to buy the whole property, turn it into a new fancy loft space. Um, we were all bought out of our lease. We were all given 60 days notice. We all had to go off and find a new space. And then the deal fell through. Uh, but I'd already committed to a new lease and, and, um, and we started to build out a space so I couldn't really move. But now my studio is a mile and a half from my house. That's another nice thing about uh, working for myself is that I can kind of be in control of what my commute looks like. My commute is a mile and a half. Um, if I hit every red light, it takes me 10 or 12 minutes um, to get back and forth. I'm, I'm never any further than about four miles away from the kids, from their school uh, or where they are. So um, it's nice to have my life contained pretty much into one zip code, all right? So, uh, we built out um, our studio. I'm going to have like a video tour of that on my blog in a few weeks. We were going to have that ready for this class, uh, but we've had a project in-house um, lately that we're under a, an agreement that nothing of that project can be shown until it's completed. So we couldn't really do anything because our studio is filled with stuff um, that we couldn't show. So uh, in a few weeks, once that's all cleared out and we can mop and vacuum and clean up, we'll do a little video tour of our space. If you're considering a studio space, um, again, this, we're just kind of talking philosophy of having a studio space. You're sitting at home, you're shooting in your garage right now, you have a shed in the back, you have a third bedroom, a second bedroom, or uh, you could do like I've done before, you push all the furniture to the walls and your living room is now your space that you shoot in. Um, and you're thinking about a space. You're saying, you know, I'd like to maybe one day move into a studio space. Um, something that I want to put into your head is what else can it be other than a photo studio? All right. Um, what happened with me is I, uh, when I got my big space, the 2,500 square foot kind of loft space, um, a friend of mine contacted me who's an artist in Atlanta and he said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm wanting to do a show of my art and I just want to do it for kind of friends and family. And it takes months and months and months and months even to get into some of the better, like coffee houses. Um, uh, to hang my stuff at this coffee house, it'll be eight months till I can get in there. And I'd love to do some sort of little show. And I was talking to Scott Dilly, a mutual friend of ours, and he said, you know, you have a big space do you think that I could come like hang stuff up and have a little party for my friends and family? And I'd been, I'd been thinking about my space. I'd been sitting in it. Um, that's another beautiful thing about my studio is I, I can go there and it's my space. That's, that's my place and I can just hang out there and think about stuff. And I'd been thinking about my space and what a blessing it's been. Because I went from my little crappy two-bedroom apartment to working out of coffee shops to my little 400 square foot shoebox of a place. Now I have this pretty nice space and, and it was a blessing. And I'd been thinking about how could I use this space that's a blessing to me and let it be a blessing to others. And then here comes my friend. He calls me up and says, I need a place to put my art. I'm like, let's do it. Let's throw a party. In fact, you invite your friends and family. I'll invite my friends and family. We'll bring in my clients as well. Um, and we'll have a night of it. And that has kind of turned into this thing. Because if you have a studio space that you're paying dedicated rent on, on a Friday night, guess what? You have to pay that rent, right? Every night, every day, for as long as you lease the place, you have to pay rent. So it can sit empty on a Friday night and you have to pay rent. You can fill it with 150 people and bring them around one sort of an idea or an event or an artist or whatever and you can fill up your space with 150 people and you're still paying your rent. So our space is open to artists, it's open to nonprofits, um, it's open to small like emerging business owners, they want to do a product launch. Um, but they're building stuff in their basement. But they'd love to have a product launch party for their jewelry or a uh, fashion line that they're creating or something like that. Our space is available for free um, for people like that. And all we do is say, you know what? You kind of match up with the kind of same people we are. But we love your work. We love your art. We believe in your business. We believe in your organization. 
our studio's open. You bring your friends, we'll bring our friends, we'll get some drinks, we'll get some food, and we'll have a whole party of it. And it's been great. Um, and, and we don't do it enough. Like, I'd like to be doing an event in my space once a month. Um, it's to give back to the community. It's to help people out. Um, and down the list, um, it's part of your brand. And suddenly you have 150 people coming in that get to see your studio and get to see your space. And you get to shake their hand and you get to meet them. Um, and there's all the advertising you can do in the world, but if someone could walk into your space and you shake their hand and talk to them and talk to them about your place and and what you do um, and bring them around some other kind of event like this artist or this business or this organization, um, it's a great, great, great networking tool. So my studio um, is mainly to separate home uh, and work so I can have that dividing line. That dividing line gets messy sometimes. Um, our kids are in our studio space a lot, so there's always a little corner with, you know, toys, and we have jumpy, you know, seats off of the door frames, and um, there's a big bean bag, and um, so I love that my kids can come to my office, my place of work, and they see what their dad does. Um, you know, a lot of people don't get to, the, a lot of kids don't get to see what their parents do growing up. Well, dad's at the office, mom's at, at the hospital working or whatever. They don't get to go hang out and watch their parents work. Um, and I like that, that my kids get to come hang out and watch, watch me work. Um, but, you know, there's the, those lines, Meg and I, we still try to find the balance. So that, that's my space. Um, that's why I have a studio. Um, and if you have a studio space, you need to remember, you need to put this in your head, it's a blessing. You are blessed that you get to be working to the point with a camera, doing something you love, to the point where you have your own space dedicated to it. And how can you turn that blessing into other, for other people? And it, your motivation should not be because it will come back and pay you back in work. But the fact of the matter is it will come around and help your business. If you just shut the doors and you don't want anybody else in there, um, then you go do your work and you shut the doors, you're still paying rent on the place. So fill it up with people, all right? So that is my kind of philosophy, my history, where I'm coming from about studio space. Because I'm talking about studio lighting and, and working in a studio and clients coming in. And, and we're going to talk about gear and we're going to nerd out on all the photons and, and inverse square law and watt seconds and pro photo versus alien bees and all of that. Um, questions. Let's, let's put a call out for questions real quick. We'll start with questions from uh, the live audience, and that way people in the interwebs uh, can be typing out anything. Any questions about this kind of thing, studio space? Anything? All right, Susan. I have a question in the chat room from I Rest My Case. They'd like to know, is the purpose of the white seamless to do dropouts, and what do you do with shadows? Uh, we'll talk studio. about that as we start shooting tomorrow. The purpose of the white seamless is just having a very clean, simple background. Um, you can do dropouts. I'll do a little bit of post-production. It's not simply to rip them off one background and place them in Paris, France, you know, with a stock photo. Um, I don't do anything like that with it. Um, but it's a, it's a simple, clean, classic kind of look. You can go back to Avedon's work and his stuff shot on, you know, just pure white backgrounds. It's, it's just sort of a timeless, classic thing. And it's something I know, it's something that's simple, it's something that's easy. Um, I work with a lot of editorial and commercial clients or music industry clients, and they need a picture they can drop artwork and text and all of that stuff on, and you give them a nice, clean, white palette to do that. Um, and they can throw a design of a poster or a card or something together very quickly with a white background. Um, so that's why I, I shoot with that. Derek. Uh, Tim in the chat room would like to know what kind of ceiling height you would recommend if somebody's looking for a space. You know, what kind of space do they think you're okay. going to need vertically? Space considerations. That's a great one. Um, space considerations when setting up a controlled environment for controlled lighting. Uh, the question is ceiling height. Um, 
I would say minimum 10 feet. Minimum 10 feet. 14, 15 feet uh, is, gives you a lot more options. Um, I would prefer to have about a 14 to 15 foot ceiling height. Uh, you could have high, you could have 20 foot, 25 foot ceilings. Uh, but working like indoors with a nine foot standard residential ceiling, um, a lot of a lot of challenges that we'll talk about this weekend. Of what would happen right now if I had a nine foot ceiling? Then that means my light would have to come down to here, and now I've got this issue and. This is how I would try to work around it. Um, I would say other space considerations. In my own personal, um, personal experience in working in studio spaces, I would say a minimum of a thousand square feet. A thousand square feet that's open. Um, 800 square feet that's open can work. Um, you're going to want your longest throw to be able to have that um, free from any uh, poles, walls, columns, desks, anything like that. Um, as open of a space as possible. Um, minimum, if you find a thousand, great. Um, start getting up to 1,500, 2,000 square feet. Very, if it's open, not just chopped up into 14 different offices, but it's an open floor plan. 1,500, 2,000 square feet is a very nice size to be working in with 11 to 12 foot ceiling. Um, you can be very happy in that kind of space. Yes? Bob would like, Bob would like to know about windows. Windows. Um, With them or, use, or not? Window lights, amazing. Uh, my first place did not. It was, an, it was an inside little box. I didn't have any natural light coming in. Uh, the space that we have now has 64 feet of uh, floor to ceiling windows. The whole front of it is windows. And I love it. They are south facing. So that means I am getting, in Atlanta, um, I am getting sun direct sun from about 9 in the morning till about 5 or 6 in the evening um, and it's coming just tracks right across the front of my building. Now the classic uh, studio space would have northern facing windows, right? So you're not getting direct sunlight into it but you're having this beautiful window light. So a lot of people want to find northern facing windows but when you're starting to shop for a place and you're saying, can you just take this building turn it around? Because um, it's just, the windows are in the wrong location. When, you, when you're having to find a space based on north facing windows, your options just became this big, right? So I found this space and what we use are a series of curtains. Um, we have two, two sets of curtains. One is a diffusion curtain that will just uh, diffuse all of that sunlight. And then we have a row of black curtains that if we need to cut all of it out, so it's great to have, like if you get a job shooting headshots for an actor and actress, uh, many people enjoy, uh, th they prefer natural light for headshots. If an actor and actress comes to my studio, they're looking for a headshot, it's going to be natural light. I'm just going to put them up next to the big windows and boom, 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 there we go. Um, I've built my psych wall. We'll talk about psych walls tomorrow when we're setting up White Seamless. I built my psych wall in such a way that, that I can just open the windows and shoot on my psych with available light. Um, and it, it's beautiful, gorgeous light. Uh, but available light is what it is and you can modify it a bit with scrims, silks, reflectors. But if I want to take a big, light, airy, available light studio and make it black at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, um, I've got to go to my strobes to do that. So I have more available light than I know what to do with um, in my space. But many, many times I've got to cut all that available light out and I'm going right to strobes because I have more control of what I can do with strobes than I can with available light. Chase. I was kind of hoping to inspire some of the people here in the live audience to ask some questions as well. And one of the ones that I thought people uh, out in the internet world might want to know about too is when you think about your studio space, it's not necessarily just uh, just a seamless, right? Uh, you've talked right. to me, you and I have had conversations about building sets and stuff like that. Can you talk about making cool, cool places to shoot within your studio? Yes. Um, and everything in my studio has to have like 14 different purposes. 
like there's nothing in our studio that has one single purpose and it does nothing else we have these uh, these rolling carts um, a their storage um, they have kind of a nice uh, wood uh, kind of front to them I can roll them in behind somebody and it's suddenly a background um, it's a gear cart and it is a cocktail bar um, for events I mean it, it every it's got to do everything uh, from a photo background to a cocktail to storage to a uh, gear cart right um, and one nice thing with having higher ceilings and one thing that we'll talk about this weekend is you can build set pieces modular set pieces um, that you can bring in um, and clamp them together and build a set build a little room build a vignette build build something inside of your space so a client comes to you and says we want this kind of look um, you can just build a set in the middle of your studio and make that happen. I worked at catalog houses when I was in photography school in the set department. Um, and, and so I, I became, you know, uh, pretty good with running a saw and a, and a nail gun and could knock together some quick walls. Um, and once you build some dummy walls, we'll talk about this, we have a set, a little tiny corner set uh, built in the next room that we'll use this weekend. You can build that set and you keep those walls. And then you say, okay, next client's coming in, we're going to paint it, we're going to tape stuff to it, we're going to, whatever we want to do. And we're going to just change it up, and you can make different things going on in your studio. How much do, do you guys build sets in your space? We, we build them a lot, actually. And uh, I'd say most of the work that we do is location-based, but that's one of the things, you, you hit on two things that I think are super key um, for us, which is the ability to build stuff, whether it's a big bathroom set or a big living room lifestyle set, but also the versatility of all the stuff because you, you, the, you start getting some gear and everything has to have a lot of functions and the space is, is ideal if it's really transformative. Right. And I think that's a huge, huge key for folks at home is the ability to make your, I mean, I love the, your, your mag cart is your, is your uh, cocktail bar. It's the thing you roll in walls on and it's, the greeting table when people come in for an event. It's, right. it's brilliant. Yeah, it has to be everything. Um, yeah, and, and it's that having that open space um, allows you the ability to do that. Having the higher ceilings gives you the ability to do that. And we're going to be talking, remember too, so I don't lose everyone, we're going to be talking about kind of the higher thoughts and ideas and stuff you can do in a studio space. And I know many of you are like, I got a flash and an umbrella and that's it no worries uh, we're gonna go there and we're gonna build up uh, the thing that I want for you to see is that okay here's where I am today my next move may go to here my next move may be to this my next modifier might be this one in two years from now I will be thinking about a studio space and for the next two years I'm going to kind of be formulating in my head of what that looks like right so if you're sitting here today and you're like I got 50 cents and a flash and an umbrella and that's it you won't be there two years from now if you work hard, if you're tenacious, if you hustle, you'll, two years from now, you'll be like, I'm, man, I need a studio space. What does that look like? Hopefully this kind of stuff is, will be planting seeds, like, oh, I want to look for this and this kind of square footage and this blah, 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 blah. All right. Any other questions before we move on? Oh, they're coming in. Uh, we'll go to, well, let's go with you. I'll just and we'll, uh, we'll start with you. We'll hit your two questions and we're going to kind of move on. Thinking about the person that has the four hundred dollar, four hundred square foot studio space, like you were talking about, when can they, like, when did you make the justification to step it up? Was it I'm getting enough business to get a larger space, or I'm having to turn down enough business that I should probably get a larger space? I think what was going on in my head was um, when I signed the lease on the four hundred square foot little space, I could barely afford it. Like I could just, and, and it was like, we're turning cable off so we can get this space. I'm not going and getting a latte anymore so I can have this space. And it grew and it grew and it grew to the point in that year's time 
Um, okay, like I'm easily hitting my rent. Uh, having this space has allowed me to bring in a couple other jobs. Uh, my, fir my first kind of job that came in was about a $2,500 job. I could not have shot at the coffee house. Um, so I used a $400 a month studio space. Um, and that was all inclusive too, except the internet. But that was my utilities. And then 50 bucks a month for internet into the place. So, um, and my 400 square foot studio space, they got me a $2,500 job. And then got me another one. And I was really struggling. Like I could get the job done, but I was struggling in that little tiny small of a space. And it also came down to the, the little bit higher end of a client starting to come in into my little tiny space. They're used to having a little more space to work into. This is Zach, he's a professional photographer. Welcome to his studio. Suck it in. <laughs> and like, don't move because that's all the space you have. I needed somewhere when a client walked in and they're bringing five people with them and their group of people. There's nowhere to put five people in my space, you know? Um, so I needed a couch and a chair. Like, hey, you guys go hang out over there while we do our photo shoot over here. Instead of y'all line up against the wall while I do my photo shoot right here. So it was kind of moving. It was a natural progression. The next space that I took, I could barely afford it. Within a year, I was easily making the payments. Uh, some of the chatters would really like to know, you know, sharing studio space and what do you think about that, sharing with other photographers, other artists, people like that? I will share my studio space with another photographer if they are specifically needing it for a meeting space. Um, like my buddy Mark, who I talk about all the time, Mark Climey. Um, Mark, uh, the primary, uh, primary focus of his business is weddings. Um, and sometimes he wants a space where, hey, you know, uh, I'm going to meet clients and go over albums and talk about that. So, so he can have, he has a key to this door and he can have my space at any time for that. Uh, every now and then he might need a, to do a shoot in there. And we can schedule that and work around it. Um, I, I need my space available to me because I get jobs at the last minute. And hey, uh, could you do this job next Tuesday? And if I'm in a space with two other photographers, um, uh, well, hold on. Well, Bill has it, you know, in the morning, and Susan has it in the afternoon. Well, no, can we do it Wednesday? No, it needs to be done Tuesday. Now suddenly I'm scrambling. I'm paying rent on a space to shoot, and I may be scrambling to have to find a new place to shoot, kind of thing. Um, so. I, I'm, I'm kind of a believer in it's great to share a space if you could break it up with some different disciplines like you and a graphic designer. You can feed them work and they could feed you work. They don't need this room to shoot in. They need an office and a meeting space. You need the office and meeting space as well and you can cohabitate there but if you are a photographer and if you're getting a space that probably means that you're busy enough to justify it therefore you need that space available to you when you need it um, so I don't think I would go into space with another photographer to share unless it was so big that they could be shooting over there and I could be shooting over here and we could both keep a professional atmosphere together for two different clients all right. We had one more question. We're going to bundle a couple of them together. Uh, people are asking about the basic color of the walls okay. and uh, basic power recommendations. And I realize that would be dependent upon space, et cetera. But if that could be right brought up. Okay. Uh, color of the walls. Uh, the smaller the space gets, the darker the walls need to be. All right. So you start having like a. 12 foot by 15 foot room, you want to start going like dark gray um, on the walls. You don't want anything really bright. You don't want to have a big bright red wall because as soon as you start blowing off a flash and it hits that wall, um, it's going to send red light back into your space. Um, the larger your space gets and the further the walls get away from each other, um, the whatever color they can start to go. So I'd say that if, if your walls are starting to get 
20, 30 feet apart from each other. Uh, we keep our walls pr pretty much all the time white. Um, I can use them as a white background. Uh, my psych wall only goes 19 feet and then another wall comes out to the side and if I blow enough light into that corner I can extend the white if I need to. Um, and when we have uh, like a gallery opening or something like that for an artist um, we typically want that kind of classic white wall uh, track lighting kind of uh, setup for that. Um, but our walls are a palette and if we need to paint them for a job, then by golly, we bust out the paint, 12 bucks worth of paint and a roller, and we change the space. Um, if you're working in a small, anything that's less than 15 feet wide, I'd say start taking your walls a little darker so that you can control bouncing flash that might be going everywhere. All right. Any other questions before we move on? Oh, the power. As, as in, like, how much juice coming out of the walls? Correct. I don't know. I'm not an electrician. <laughs> um, I, you know, if it's a 50-year-old building and, and electric hasn't been updated ever, you might want to go plug some strobes in before you sign a lease and hit, hit them at full power. And if the whole place, you know, goes down, uh, I've never had a... I, I don't run a bazillion watt seconds of strobe power. Um, I have blown circuits a couple times, but I usually blow circuits more when we have like two steamers and three hair dryers going. Those blow circuits a whole lot faster than my strobes do. Um, and that's just steamers and curling irons and stuff. Susan? Zach, Saeed in chat is asking, if you can't afford a studio, especially if you live in a very expensive city, what are some alternative ways to still get a studio type shot? Um, a studio type shot is simply, it's going back to that, what is a studio? It is a floor and a wall. Floor and a couple walls. And you start looking around. Where's a floor? Where's a few walls? Some place where you could go work and not get kicked out by security. Um, or at least get an hour's worth of work done before you get kicked out of by security. Um, that studio-like shot's going to come in from the lighting that you bring. And you either bring that in, because when we look at a shot, oh, that was shot in a studio, a lot of times we're looking at the lighting. But if I have a white wall that's in a studio space that I pay rent for, or it's a white wall down in a parking deck, and I bring a softbox on the parking deck white wall and the softbox on the white wall in my studio, I'll take two identical looking pictures, you'll look at them and you'll say, that was shot in a studio. And I could say, well that one was and that was shot in a parking deck, but they look identical because it's the same kind of background and the same lighting conditions. Right? It's a controlled environment with controlled lighting. That's a studio. Um, if I was young and single and no kids, um, I would be looking for a space that I could like live up in a little tiny corner um, and just the rest of the space would be my studio. Um, if I was a young, married, no kids, I'd still be looking for that kind of situation. But I would not be looking for a studio work situation with children. Because you need to build sets and you need stuff and, and at some point like, okay, we got to get the kids out of here because if we look at this set wrong, it's going to fall over. Um, we don't need, you know, a one-year-old banging on it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that answers that question. It did. Thank you. All right. And remember, we are in a space that's not my studio, but I have to make it my studio. Um, and it's going to be how I use light. Chase? Oh, man, thank you. Okay, I want to say Chase. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We're excited. I'm going to be watching from home and uh, tear it up. All right. Adios and bye, y'all. Have a good night. Kick it. <laughs>